Hello beautiful souls, my name is Jessie and welcome back to another episode of Rewired to Inspire. This show where we'll dive into self-love, learn tangible ways to rewire the brain and discovering your soul's purpose. The goal of Rewired to Inspire is to encourage listeners to begin doing the hard work, to get curious and open to maximizing your life. Our mindset shapes how we live. Depending on life events, traumas, and personal experiences, our mindsets are all vastly different. However, one thing we all have in common is the ability to rewire our mind, to change the narrative, and to pivot our lives. I hope you leave each episode with the belief that you are so worthy to live a life true to you. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of Rewire to Inspire. I'm your host, Jesse Brown, and I am beyond excited, as always, to be here with you all for today's episode number 51. Today's episode is one that I really think you guys are going to like because I think it's one that I hope allows you to take a step back at your own life and to do some reflection. And as I mentioned in my last episode when I shared about why I changed my podcast name, it's because the whole preface of this show is to encourage listeners to begin to rewire our thinking, think back on why it is we think the way we think, why we do things the way we do them, why we act the way that we act, because everything typically comes down to life events we've had, traumas we've had, people we've been surrounded with, experiences we've seen, things we watch on TV, people we hang out with. We are constantly being influenced by the things around us and that shapes who we are. And for today's episode, it's one that has been inspired from an outside source and that outside source is Steve Jobs. And if you've never heard of Steve Jobs, you've definitely heard of Apple before and the Macintosh and Pixar and all those things. And so that is who started all those things. And Steve Jobs has a phenomenal speech that he does in front of Stanford for the grad class several years ago. I want to say it's in like 2004. I might be wrong on that. I'll put the link to his speech in the show notes because it really is such a powerful speech and honestly something I listen to once a week just to inspire me because it really is just an uplifting, powerful message that he has in that. So much so that I took his famous quote from that speech and that is exactly what I'm going to be chatting with you all about today. And so for episode 51 of Rewired to Inspire, we are going to be chatting all about connecting the dots in your life. And so as I was listening to this speech, but also preparing for what I wanted to share with you all, I really realized that every time someone listens to this speech, you're really going to take away from it what aligns with you. And so I just want to highlight that what I'm talking about today is from the broad perspective of my mind. But if you go and listen to this speech, you might view it completely different. And I'm going to read his quote that he says in the speech to you guys in a moment. And I just want you to know that what I'm sharing with you is from my perspective, but know that it's okay for you to maybe have a different shift on how that quote sits with you. Or maybe you got an, a different additional meaning from it outside of what I noticed. And if that is the case, first off, I would love to hear that if, if you're open to share that with me. But also, I just think it's so cool that we can all listen to one podcast, one song, one speech, one whatever, and we can all view that a little bit differently. So I just want to begin with highlighting that connecting the dots is basically, long story short, and saying that beginning to connect the dots, that everything that has happened to you thus far in your life, everything that you've gone through, the the quote unquote good and the bad, has led you to where you are now. And there's likely a deeper rooted reason for that. And so what he says in his speech is that you cannot connect the dots looking forward. And I just want you to think about that for a second of of what he's trying to say there, because it's so true that how are we going to connect the dots of where we are now if, if that time hasn't even happened yet? But we can often look back and pinpoint either a traumatic event or a life event or a move or a breakup or whatever that has pivoted our life for a reason. And oftentimes when that happens, it does lead to greater good in our lives because it causes us, forces us in a way to get outside of our comfort zone, to shift our thinking, to change our environment, to change our our perception, whatever that looks like. And so that quote is so powerful because it empowers folks to begin to look at their past from a different lens. Because I think oftentimes if we've had things that happen in our life that are traumatic or hard or have affected us, we often hold almost like a dark cloud over ourselves and we associate that 
with that dark time in our life and we begin to form that as part of our identity. But what if we're able to look at things that have happened in our life as a way that they've gotten us to where we are now or potentially in ways in the future that we don't even know how they're going to line up yet. And that's exactly what he talks about in his speech where he says that he created Apple because when he was in college, he actually ended up dropping out of college because nothing that he was taking was in alignment. And because of that, he started to drop into different classes at Stanford and one of them was a calligraphy class. Having no idea why that course or how that course would apply to his life, but recognizing that he loved and enjoyed it. And later down the road, then coming out with with Max and now creating what we have as our keyboards on our computers and all those things, he didn't know at the time that taking that class was going to lead to that. And so that just shows a very correlation example of how things happen in our life simply at the time because we enjoy it or we're drawn to it, but we never really know how that's going to circle back to us later in life. And so today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a couple of my personal experiences that have happened that... At the time, I wanted to throw in the towel, be done. I I had no understanding of why certain things were happening. And now that I'm here at a sense of living my purpose, I'm able to look back and recognize that had those things not happened, I likely wouldn't have found this. Podcasting wouldn't likely have just fallen into my lap. And obviously there are times that we don't really know that, we don't have certainty around that. However, if we look at the evidence of things, it often lines up of where people are, especially the people that are most aligned and fulfilled and happy and successful because they follow the path of their heart, not the path of the status quo or what society wants us to do. And so he really sums that up in a great quote that basically says, none of this had any practical application in my life, right? So when he took that course in the beginning, it had it physically did not have any relevancy to his life. But that's just it. It's that we might not know why we did something or why we're doing something until much later it comes back up and we realize, whoa, okay, we're connecting the dots now. This is making a lot more sense. And so from here, I'm going to continue to read a little bit more of his quote because I think it really does just tie everything together that I just said. So he says, none of this had any practical application in my life. You have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, karma, whatever, because believing the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart, even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. And so my message for you all, and just my encouraging felt message from my heart to share with you all, is that life will always be unpredictable. And what might seem like the end or what might seem like a block or what might seem like a confusing time in our life where we don't know whether we should go left or we should go right and we're afraid to make the wrong choices and we're and we're so caught up in our head of of the future outcomes we have to learn and trust that again all those dots will align in the future recognizing that every decision that you have ever made in your life has gotten you to where you are right now one small decision in your life that you took has got you to where you are because had you made one small difference in where you want to live, who you want to be with, what you want to take in school, what you want to do for a career, that shifts our life so quickly. But if we're able to have that compassion for ourselves that anything that we've done in life will lead us on that path to success, knowing that we have to pull from things from our heart, we have to listen to our body to see if those things are even in alignment in the first place. Because had Steve Jobs just stayed in college taking the same course he was taking that wasn't in alignment just to make his parents happy, who knows what we would have for technology now? Who knows what we would have for a computer in our world right now? All those things happen for a reason, although at the time I'm sure he felt like giving up, felt like a failure, felt like whatever, right? So sometimes it's about following your heart, but also having that trust and compassion for yourself that Everything is eventually going to correlate together and come together. We just have to have that trust and belief that it is going to happen and that we are worthy of that happening. And I think that that also allows us to live everyday life almost in a state of free and flow because we're not so worried about the outcome all the time. Being more focused on the journey that leads us there. Because I say all the time, if we're just looking to jump to the end to be successful, We're not really taking the time to learn anything, learn lessons, and allow ourselves to naturally get to where we're going when we're supposed to be there. 
And so again, as I said in the beginning of this episode, I think that this quote can just be taken in so many different ways. But a large way that it landed for me is that we don't always understand why certain things happen to us. We, in the moment, you know, we have real human emotions and and real human feelings. And so at the time, if we've gone through something traumatic or something hard or life is rough right now or whatever it is we're struggling, in the moment, it can be really easy to get caught up in our heads and just say, you know, I give up, like I'm done. My life's so crummy. Nothing good ever happens to me. Everything's so negative. And we get stuck in that headspace. And so I hope that this inspires even one person that's maybe been stuck in that headspace to just know that this is not your end all be all. Knowing that it's okay to tend to our emotions and that they are valid, 100% they're valid. But that this journey of where you're at right now or where you maybe have been or maybe where you will be in the future is likely going to connect you to something greater. It's going to teach you a lesson that you might then be able to teach other folks in your own unique way. But when we get so stuck in things of thinking, this is just how it is, everything's negative, everything's crap, whatever, we're really limiting ourselves to see the beauty and the good and the opportunity in life, to see the lessons that we learn through those times, through the hard times. And I had an episode a couple months ago all about how our traumas can really lead us to success. And that's exactly what I'm going to be sharing with you all in a moment of some life experiences that I went to through that at the time felt like, why is this happening to me? Why? I don't deserve this this isn't fair, whatever. And now that I'm looking back, I'm realizing, oh, had that not happened, my life would look completely different and it wouldn't look like it does now. And I'm pretty darn happy with how my life looks right now. And so I encourage you to ask yourself, where is it that you can begin to connect some of those dots, even for yourself right now of your past of where it's gotten to you? Where can you begin to reflect back and maybe make correlations in your life? Because we all have those patterns. We all have ways that we're able to connect the dots in our life of how things have happened. It's about our mindset and our perception of those things that matter. So I'm going to take you guys back to really what surfaced for me um, for this episode. Because I've shared my story before about playing college basketball and how I had a coach when I was playing that was just very emotionally abusive, very belittling with words, just took my whole identity away, which was playing sports and playing basketball, that I am an athlete, that I'm a shooter, whatever. And at the time, and having then been diagnosed with PTSD three years later, going to therapy, I had gained a lot of weight after this had happened. I was dealing with severe depression, really around toxic people. My life was just going really, really in a way that was not in alignment for me. And so at that time, it felt like the end all be all, like I had lost everything. There was nowhere else to go. I didn't want to finish my schooling, which was social work. And the only reason I took social work was because that coach had kind of encouraged me to take it, even though at the time I didn't even know what a social worker was. And so right there, there's, there's two things, my schooling and basketball, both of which I had no idea why they happened the way that they happened, but had they not happened, I wouldn't be on here talking with you all. Because being that experience with my basketball coach, it taught me to use my voice. It taught me to use my voice for others who maybe haven't had it, have lost it, have lost touch with it, are afraid to use it. It has helped me grow and gain more confidence than I've ever had in my life. It has encouraged me to now work with youth and encourage youth athletes to stand up and tell their parents if they're having a coach that's acting a certain way. It's inspired me to want to treat other people just kinder And it just taught me so many lessons that at the time I didn't realize. And then at the same time of playing basketball, again, like I mentioned, I took social work. And at that time, I had no idea why I was taking that course. And in the beginning, I was failing because I just had no interest for it. And as I started to really get into it and go into practicums and get more used to it, I realized that it really was more in alignment than I thought. And that job led me to becoming a counselor. And during that job at the time, again... I had a little dip in that, that really burned me out. Working in the trauma recovery field during the pandemic was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my whole life. I remember just feeling burnt out, like I had just done all the schooling just to end up burnt out two years into my career. I had lost basketball, I was away from family, I was miserable miserable in my job, I was isolated as were lots of other people because it was during the pandemic. 
I could feel my health depleting. I felt like I had no goals, no missions, no habits, no friends, no anything. And so again, and this was only a year ago. That's the crazy thing is that this was only a year ago. And even at the time, I tried to find my spirituality and I tried to find faith and I tried to find gratitude. And the thing is, is with all of this is that it doesn't mean that every single day is bad, right? It doesn't mean that every day we have a negative outlook, but it's our whole perception of how we view ourselves that matters. Because at that time I was waking up with gratitude in my heart, but also with sadness in my mind of not understanding why certain things were happening to me instead of with the awareness that things were happening for me. I just wasn't able to connect the dots yet. And so continuing more on that journey, that is when Young Living came into my life. At the time, I had no idea why that was happening and why it was introduced to me when it was. And that led to me jumping on my Instagram every day and sharing and doing classes and practicing my public speaking. And now I realize that my speaking from doing Young Living, the lessons I learned about the brain and the body from counseling, in my voice that I gained through my basketball coach, all three of those simultaneously have led me on my journey to becoming a podcaster. Although each and every one of those things individually might have not been the best outcome in and of themselves, but together have formed me into who I am. They have shaped my new identity. They have given me awareness to what I don't want my life to look like and what I do want it to look like. It has given me a message that I want to share with the world to inspire other people who have maybe gone through similar things. Knowing that it doesn't dismantle those emotions and those things that I went through. And I still think about myself back at that time and I just want to hug myself and give her love and tell her that everything's going to be okay. And I can do that for myself now because I'm able to connect the dots looking backwards. And so my message for you is to encourage you to ask yourself, what are those ifs in your life? Because for me, if I didn't quit basketball, I might have never gotten a certain job, met certain people that put me where I am now, right? If I wouldn't have done certain things, they wouldn't have got me to where I am. So what are those ifs for you? Beginning to connect your dots. And we do this exercise as counselors and as social workers where it's basically a life map. Where on that life map, we'll talk about certain things that have happened at all vital points in your life. And that's typically to give the counselor a view of what it is that's maybe gone on in your life to get a better snapshot idea of where you are now. And I really think that doing this is no different than the activity that I'm encouraging you all to do, which is to write down exactly that. Make yourself a map of the good times, the bad times, and what did you learn from them? How did that make you feel at that time? Do you still think that some of those things have shaped you into who you are now? Are those qualities that you think are striving you or you think that they're holding you back, right? Sometimes life is about taking a step back, removing ourselves from our everyday scenario because the thing is, is again, 40 to 95% of what we do every day is a habit. It's things that are on autopilot. And so if we're not able to remove ourselves from our daily actions, daily thoughts, daily habits, whatever, it's gonna be really hard sometimes to rewire that and to begin to reflect, But my whole podcast aim is to encourage listeners to reflect, to do the hard work in a safe way. And if you're able to make yourself that map and you're able to see those things, you might be able to understand things more than you maybe thought that you did. You might not realize that maybe one of your family members was a nurse and they told you that they were a nurse at a certain age and that influenced you from a young age and now you're a nurse, right? Or just different examples of how things that happen in our life subconsciously are rewiring us and adapting us to make choices that are going to lead us to our higher good and to our purpose. But if we are stuck in those, you know, trauma response states and survival states and we're living there, it's going to be really hard for us to move forward and to get the lessons out of those experiences. Because I do truly think that any horrendous experience that we've gone through is meant to teach us something. Or at least that is a way to look at it that allows us that opportunity to heal. Because what can we learn from something that is such an empowering thing on ourselves? Because if someone has taken away your voice, your power, whatever, claiming that back for yourself. And the way that we do that is by reflecting. And again, this is something that if it is too overwhelming to do by yourself, I definitely encourage you to seek a mental health professional and maybe go through a life map with someone there. Maybe sitting down with a loved one and doing it together. That could be a great exercise to get to know your partner, mapping out your life of all the things you've gone through and how they shape who you are. Because you might not even realize that 
Maybe when you get angry, you're acting like a certain caregiver that you had in your life. Maybe you respond a certain way because that's what you watched all growing up. And so maybe life events that you've gone through are going to paint you on a future that you haven't even realized yet. Or maybe everything in life is trying to push you towards that, but you're resistant against it. So sometimes it's about just sitting down, swallowing our ego, and just getting honest with ourselves, right? Every day we are learning new lessons and that those new lessons really could be dots for the future. And so trust that if you follow your heart and your gut and have faith, that you'll be just fine. It's such a beautiful message to just honor that everything that has happened and is going to happen is exactly how it's supposed to happen. But knowing that in those moments, it's important that we listen to our own instinct, our own gut, our own heart, because that is how we will find those things in alignment. That is how we will live an optimal life. And that is how our dots will connect for our life. But if we're constantly giving into what other people want for us or other people's opinions, we're not allowing our natural course to play out. And so I encourage you to find a common focus of the things that spark joy, the things that spark what you love. You know, why are you pulled to do certain things? Why are you, why are you pulled to do them at a certain time? Is that in correlation with something that is wired within you from five years ago, 10 years ago that you're not even realizing in your conscious mind? There really is just so many directions I can take you guys with, with today's episode. And I'm just so thankful for Steve Jobs' speech on this because it's, it's so true and it's such a simple concept that I think that we all forget because we just get so run down with technology and social media and our jobs and money and things that we forget to just give ourselves credit and to realize and learn from our experiences, right? We often are so shameful of the things that we've gone through because we don't want anybody to know. We don't want to talk about it because it hurts. And so what do we do? We suppress it. But when we suppress those things, we're not allowing ourselves to, again, connect the dots, but also learn from them. How can I learn from that basketball experience so that nobody else ever has to feel that same way again? Or if they do, giving them, giving them permission that it's not their end and that it will get better. Because we do have to allow other people to go through their own course and their own experiences. But it's being able to shift and shed light and shed your message to the world. Because we were all here and put here for a purpose. We are all here to be of service and of greater good. But when we get so stuck in our ways and stuck in our patterns and in our traumas and whatever, it can be really hard for us to break free of that. And so for today, my goal and message for listeners to do is to pause at the end of this episode, pause, sit down with yourself and reflect, reflect back and connect the dots. Think back to the last time a horrific thing happened or something happened that really upset you. And at first you might not be able to think of things, but as you open one door, you'll notice that more doors will begin to open. You're like, oh, that's why that happened, which led to that happening. And if that didn't happen, that wouldn't have happened. And if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here right now, right? And so beginning to connect the dots, beginning to get to know your own story, your own narrative, right? You are the author of your book. You are the author of your life. You get to backtrack and see how things have correlated to where you are now, but also use that as a trajectory and as a direction to push you forward to where you want to go next. And so I truly, truly hope that you feel safe and inspired and encouraged to sit down and just get true and genuine with yourself. And if you're needing support with this, as always, please feel free to reach out. I would love to jump on a call, share my knowledge with you, walk you through that in a safe way. Because just knowing that you don't have to do this alone, but knowing that, again, we are the captain of our ship. We are the captain of our life. But knowing that in saying that, that puts a lot of pressure on us, but good pressure of saying that we are the ones that get to make those decisions in our life. So I hope that this pulls and inspires you to go be that captain for your ship. Go be that captain for your life. Go connect those dots. Go see how those are probably pushing you more than you even realize into your present and into your future. I want to thank you guys so, so much as always for tuning into today's episode of Rewired to Inspire. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I hope it encourages you to begin to reflect on your life a little bit differently, to give yourself some grace and permission that everything that you've gone through has likely happened for a reason and it's put you to where you are now. How can we find the beauty and the lessons from that and share that with the world? Thank you all so, so much. I'll chat with you all next episode. Bye, you guys. 
Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's episode of Rewire to Inspire. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next episode. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.